Bowers and Wilkins. So the new 600 S3s, 600s, I remember oh, early 90s, I bought my first pair of uh, six or twos, I think I bought back then, um, with the original uh, Kevlar drivers in them, yellow drivers and so on. And uh, they, they've, they've been a, a model that has been around a long time and now we're on to Series 3. So you looked at the 6 or 6, is that correct? I did and handed it an Editor's Choice Award, no less. Yeah, excellent. So we were keen. A lot of people out there, it's the first entry point into Bowers, um, the 600 series. They've always been popular as a multi-channel system um, and, and an entry point. So what did you think, Matt, did they live up to you know previous history? Are they adding anything new this time around? Well, as an entry set, I thought they were fantastic, quite honestly. I mean, and we talk about, you know, the economical crunch and, and people trying to save pennies and things. And the to me, the price point didn't really match what these offered. Um, I, I just thought they were really, just really good. And it was, I mean, obviously I had these, so I went from the ribbon tweeters on the monitor audio golds one week to then swapping it all out for this BMW and they use a titanium tweeter, which was an interesting implementation. So you can see that above the, the cone there. And then you got the continuum driver that sits below that. It's that silvery like my wife said it looked like one of those skirts from the 19 whatever's that girls used to wear when they go out that real <laughs> aluminium foil looking stuff um bit, bit of space age stuff but the way they implemented that and i think ed was it you that did that review on the 606s right yes i just thought it was i you know sometimes people talk about like true sound or whatever and again you can go look at the measurements and that but i, I just thought that these were it, it did sound true as corny as that is yeah no i was absolutely um absolutely prepared mentally for this being a for the 606 s3 being a breathed on version of the s2 it would have some detailed improvements and you know well done bowers and wilkins stays competitive so on and so forth it doesn't look that different to the one that came before but it's genuinely outstanding um it is the, the jump in performance is very very significant it's in what i would be interested and i shamefully Matt, i haven't actually yet written, re read your full review on this what i'm most interested in especially given the nature of where we d where our reviewing sort of uh exercises differ in so far as you can calibrate down and you can be shooting for you know an actual measurable baseline um the one thing I found that Bose and Wilkins has rediscovered in the last couple of years is that they're still, it's now fun. I mean, I can't measure fun, but I know it when I hear it. Um, was Is that same sort of general sense of joy present when you've got five, six, seven of them in the room? Because it's definitely present when there's two of them. Yeah. Yeah. So then that happened to me, actually. I wrote about it a little bit, but there was an, uh, I think it was an Evanescence cover that came on which was an older song that I used to like back when I was in high school or whatever. So that kind of dates me a bit. But um, anyways, this this quartet redid it. And I listened to it the first time. And another thing I kind of really liked about the Bowers is you could just keep turning them up. I don't know if you did that with the 606. I just kept turning them up. And I did. And I just kept going and going and going and going. And then I really listened to that one. And to me, I, I know what you're saying. I like to get a, you know, they're good when you start to get that emotional response. Where, yes. you, just, where you feel it. I, it sounds corny and I don't mean feel it as in like the below 20 hertz like shaking your guts feel it I mean like you have an emotional reaction to what's going on and it kind of just moves you as, yes. as soft as that may make me sound but that's, no, no, that's what perfect happened. perfect sense from this end so yeah yeah um and it's good it's it is in th uh, in, invigorating um to to find that it's do that they're doing that when you've got multiple ones of them in the same room as well and they are calibrated and you know i don't for, be, believe for a second that there's any inaccuracies creeping in you know this is still a company which has you know developed a, re a reputation for being in abbey road and things like that but nevertheless there is a palpable joy to what they're doing at the moment which wasn't necessarily there five years ago and um i'm delighted that it's made it it's 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 still extant in the multi-channel side of it as well yeah, well, and one of the other side benefits for those viewers that do like to watch material with their partners, it was probably one of the first times that my partner didn't ask, what did they just say? Right. <laughs> Which is like the ever annoying thing, right? Because it's like, because then you end up explaining the movie to, and then you miss the next line or whatever. But that that didn't happen. So I thought the, the like the vocal clarity on the center, which I know some people again on the reviews dogged about the size of the cones because they essentially they matched the um, five and a quarters or the five inch 
which with the surrounds instead of matching the six and a halfs in the front, which was a little bit of a different design choice. Um, but it didn't affect the the job of the center channel in this case. And that was that was to me what was really impressive because that was the first thing I noticed when I took it out of the box. I'm like, man, this thing's a bit a wee bit small, really. Um, but it didn't have any effect on the actual experience, which was good. How were the surrounds? Um, did you have them to the side or rear? Behind you? Yes, to the side, to the side. Okay, yeah. yeah. I got a bit of a weird room where um, my seat is, a. Uh, I got a pool table behind me, so it makes sense for me to have them on the sides. And that was one of the other things, like I, I think I said in the review, I listened to Tenant, and there's a particular gunshot in that that I don't remember because uh, I haven't watched the film in a while. But again, I had it cranked up because it was Tenant, and this gunshot hit. And I was surprised at how much those five inches can throw something at you. It scarily, really. I mean, it, I move my head and whatever. I'm quite a jumpy movie watcher anyways, but yeah it definitely has that good effect and and they integrated well with the fronts did they yeah well that was the thing that it was interesting because they use the same titanium domes as the center and the same size cones it's, except they're just single so it creates this like triangle effect and then you've got your your stereo towers that are the six and a half so they got a little bit more grunt to them so i thought that that was you can kind of tell that bowers is coming from the musical angle on that right so it's it's catering to the group that's going to use the the stereo listening and you get a little bit more out of the towers and those three are going to be shut off anyway and then you can quite quickly switch it over to the 5.1 and there's no timber mismatch or power mismatch really when it's when it's panning around because there's quite a few films that i watched for that reason to like kind of say because again i i look at the size of a speaker and i go right displacement should win but it, it kind of defied that a bit which was good yeah Matt, Just, and and one for ed as well it you know, quite a bit of finger pointing, certainly in the past, towards Bowers in terms of being too bright of a speaker, too sibilant sometimes, and so on. How are they handling it this time? You know, the S3s, I've, I've heard the 700 series, I've heard the 800s, 600s, I haven't heard this uh, iteration of them. So, so, how do they handle things? I, from my perspective, from a two channel perspective, unless you go out of your way to find something actively and shriekingly bright, I don't think it would be. Uh, the issue it once was the interesting thing is <clears throat> and we're at the very limits of my technical understanding here the perceived brightness from Bowers and Wilkins it was never necessarily the tweeter that was misbehaving it was the hard edge that crept in as the Kevlar driver reached its upper registers and that was um, effectively nullified um, when they moved to continuum and they've only got better at integrating that continuum from there. Um, they, I mean, I'm sure that somebody out there will get a sound out of them, which is too forward, but you have to work at it. Okay. Yeah. Well, and I think some of the, you know, material choice as well, like if you're choosing something, like you say, if there's nails on a chalkboard, well, that's what, you know, Bowers says that's what it's supposed to sound like. So they're not going to, you know, they're not going to dull the person's nails on the chalkboard, are they? They're going to let that show through. So some of it's material choice as well. Yeah, no, I just think it's an important point because it's one that gets bandied around quite a bit on on forums and so on. Um, certainly with previous iterations, I think the the S twos were um, frowned upon, but in some quarters because well, they, yeah, things. you could. I, that would, to be honest, the S twos and the anniversaries, it was more. <clears throat> some parts of it felt it felt perhaps that certain parts of it had been updated and other parts had you know soldiered on for a bit longer and as a cohe it wasn't didn't necessarily run mm -hmm. as a cohesive whole but i think across a vast majority of speaker brands actually most companies seem to have got a little bit softer i mean i can think back to a time when monitor audios we, we packaged up previously monitor audio golds if you didn't partner them carefully they were vicious and ever since they've um moved to that um uh, ribbon and then the thing that looks like a high frequency accordion um however odd they look they work sublimely and it's now relatively hard to provoke a monitor audio as well interestingly if you are looking for a speaker which can be provoked into being significantly forward i've got one of those turning up well the review for it will be going live in december so you can uh, have a look at that one of the most expensive speakers we've ever reviewed as well so you know make of that what you will okay well um thank you very much Mark.